If you want to be able to draw stylized animals like this panda here, stick around to the end of the video and I'm going to take you step by step on how to complete the process. Let's waste no more time and get straight into it. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, as usual, another tutorial for you guys today. Just because I got these brand new stickers made for uh, Komiho.co, the brand I'm starting to launch, um, things actually moving forward, got a lot of things ordered in. I had a few messages about doing a tutorial on how to draw the panda, so I thought today I'll show you a few steps on how you can draw stylistic pandas, just like this one here. Um, yeah, so let's just, let me just show you how I've done it, let me show you. <coughs> like all tutorials that I do, you want to start off with a base shape. So let's just say, instead of a circle, which I show you all the time, I'm going to do a rectangle. Also, I just want to apologise for the lighting situation, you've got a few shadows here. Um, the bulb broke last night, but I've got a new one coming in, so I didn't want to just hold off all the tutorials. I'd rather just jump straight in and carry on as we're going, and then I'll fix it as we go. All right, as you've got the, the shape there, I'm then going to draw a rectangle. I'm having this side bigger than this side because of perspective. I want this to be towards the audience. Um, yeah, so that's the first thing you can see is this. So if I just show you what I mean a bit more, if I do a square around this like so, this is going off to this perspective, bam. This is going off to this perspective here. So the face will be divided. So you're gonna see this part of the face and this is gonna actually be the main bit of the face with the eyes and nose. So here, with the square, just draw a circle for the eye. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it to this side here. Like so. Okay, so I like to put a few bags under the eyes, that's just my style. You can just leave it um, leave it just round or add a few more. That's totally up to you. Now you want to do another rectangle on the front of the face. The, uh, the trick is don't line this rectangle with this line. You want it to be nudged this way to the to the right a bit. So another rectangle. And with that in place, you can already see that it could be any bear. You can you can even do like a pattern, not just a panda bear, you can do like a polar bear. Um, yeah, from here, this is just a basic structure shape. <clears throat> now a mistake a lot of people do is they put the nose on this line here. Um, that's not what you want to do at all. You want to bring it to the middle, but not the middle, the middle's there. So up here in this quadrant, like so. You want to do this little triangle. That'd be the base shape. And once you have the triangle in place, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave the base, I'm just gonna put all the basic shapes in, and then that way you as an artist can decide what you wanna put in and you wanna take out. So once the base is, base is down, that, op that op uh, option is for you. Um, with this side, you don't wanna put this, uh, the right side of the face in place and do another little triangle shape, like so. Just a sharp triangle, and you wanna also copy that on this side. Because it's, I'm trying to really bend the perspective, I'm gonna really push the triangle this way. And then line it up, if you did put a box in, you can just line it up with the box line, like so. And what I'm trying to really show you is how Basic shapes, it sounds like a very uh, like a real bad art teacher because they always say this, how basic shapes give you a real strong foundation to build upon. And here I want to add more texture, so I'm just gonna actually literally just add the fur here. And from the baseline, that rectangle, you just follow it until you get a shape you like. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. And I'm just gonna square that off a bit more to the perspective line that we put in place. Bam, and middle. <coughs> kind of looks like a graffiti toy at this point. This is just the bold, sharp edges. The mouth, to draw the mouth, there's normally the center line, like a little slit. And then just follow the, the original foundation shape you put in place. I like to keep my pencil loose when I've got the foundation in because I might say if I was to do this, sketchy little line, I might think, okay, I love this part here. I like how I just broke it up. It looks different. No, our artists aren't doing that. So instantly you sort of stand out by just putting these shadier lines around because later on you can just rub it all out anyway. Like here, like here, it's a perfect example. I just threw this line here 
And then I think, okay, if I build another one on top, I now create this bridge from the nose to each eye, and I can just keep going with that. And then pull another line up from here. Now I've given it more, more of a shape around the mouth, so I'm gonna follow this line that I accidentally put in and pull it across here. So that's the power staying tight at the beginning with the foundation shapes and then um, loosening things up. I'm just gonna zoom in for you guys a little bit. Like so. Okay, so there we go. Now, for the mouth, I'm gonna come off this rectangle and because I put the line in place, I know what expression I want now. I want to give it sort of like a, a panicked look, like he's just spilt something. So I'm going to put it up and down and then bring it in. Like so. That way when the mouth's open, you're going to see a bit of the teeth. If I actually give him little sharp teeth like that in the back and then bigger ones at the front. Here we go. And when it comes from the under the chin bit, I'm just gonna keep it tight to the mouth part. So just follow that down and follow the perspective. And this is what I said in my other tutorials about just starting off with the shapes and then naturally you're gonna find out where you wanna take it. I have no idea where I'm gonna take this panda's body, but now it's like he's almost holding on to something here and his body's being whipped quite quick. Exaggerate the neck shape. So he's like looking back on something. And that just comes just from starting. So I think the key for a lot of artists is just grabbing your pen and paper and just start, just start something. And here's another mistake I made with the line, but I sort of kind of like that shape. So I'm gonna imply it on this one here and just shade it around, like so. <clears throat> now once the eyes are in place, I then map out another circular shape going around the eye. This is obviously uh, the black that goes around the panda's eyes that actually make it distinguishable to be a panda. So there's one. Just keep molding the shape until you're happy. And there's two, really quick, in place, like so. And off that, I like to add a few little dots of black. So even do something cool now, you can stylize it by just adding maybe like drips from the black. So it always looks like it's some spray painting on. Um, the more your mind can come up with these little creative things, the more you're gonna stand out and people are like, oh, I love like how he's done that or what, the, what he's achieved. I'm gonna keep your eyes real big here. The next step to uh, make it look more like a panda is obviously the ears. So this top shape, let's draw a circle. Let's just draw two like Mickey Mouse ears for now. And this one here. Because this one is going to be pushed furthest back, this is the furthest back object. You can do your tricks like, just make this like ear shape. Let's so add a major detail, a little trick to uh, make stuff and give it more dimension is just, just shade it. Just shade it so it's really shallow like. Don't worry about the details because it's further back. Don't even put a line on it. You'll see that later. When I time lapse this video, you see that I'm not gonna line this at all. I'm gonna leave this as a shade of shape, just so it gives way, way more of a perspective. That's in the back, it's in the background. This is in the foreground. This is gonna be lined a bit bigger. It's like a little, little trick, a little, little illusion. But it's really effective. And using this circle, I'm just gonna go with the, because it's like a rectangle as a base shape, I'm sort of gonna rectangle this off a little bit, like this, and then draw the inner, inner fold, just like so. Keep it really simple. Let my pencil just loose, get some loose lines, trying to find some nice shapes that I haven't been used before. And now it's time to just add texture to it all. So where I put the triangles in here, I'm gonna give it more of a fur texture, so, just like this, these little, um, like these little ticks, I suppose you can call them. You're gonna have to excuse some of my explanations. Um, I'm not a qualified art teacher, I just can show you what I've learned through the years and hopefully you can take something from it and apply it to your own art. I say, if in my videos, if you can get one little lesson, one thing you can take from it, 
to me that I've accomplished what I've set out to do is just to help you guys. And if you just find it all a bunch of garbage, that's kind of a that's kind of cool too, I suppose. And I'm learning how to make better videos. So <laughs> we all get to grow together. All right. And another cool trick if you want to add a few a few more uh, fur elements without going OTT is I'll try and show you a bit clearer. Is say I've just put this bit of fur in here, a little bit more, and then just do these lines. One, two, three. <laughs> like this as well. One, two. You can keep adding these little ticks. The more you add, the more messy and furry he kind of looks. Obviously sometimes less is more. Let's give him a little, little hairstyle up here too. There we go, I don't want to OTT on that. And to humanize him a little bit, I might just do these little wrinkles up here. Like so. And just off the, I'm going to give him so his tongue's out. Yeah, like out that way. Like a dog. Because he, he just looks thirsty now. <laughs> but this is what I mean. That's the cool thing about character design is you just keep playing with it, adding, and then one minute you think, oh, he looks this way, and the next, completely change him up, make him look somewhat different. And this line, which I initially put in his neck, I'm just going to use as a small body now. I'm going to do him like a like a panda toy almost now. But that's another thing about the art. Like, I set out to do a panda, and it is still a panda, but now I think this body shape, he looks more like a plushie, like a, like a toy. And that'll obviously be the top half of the black. Let's shade it in quick, show you guys. Yeah, you look kind of crazy now with those eyes, it looks really warped. I initially set out just to do the face for you guys, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to timestamp this video so it's in sections. I think, um, you may as well, if you guys think, okay, cool, now I want to do the body, I'm going to show you guys how I do the body as well um, from here, because why not? Because I'm like that, I just like to, like to help you guys out. Okay, so he hasn't really got much of a neck, it's just straight to the body. Now I'm just gonna try and find where I want the lower half of the body to go. So it's like a snowman, I'm just making another circle here. I'm ready, I am ready just trying to find the shape right now. I'm not really, I'm, I'm sort of like in the dark feeling it out. I'm just feeling what shape goes, because if you don't like it, you just rub it out and start again. But then, let's say that's the bottom half, and let's say, let's say the body's, if I can put this belly button in place and I, I found it, I sort of like, see this is where I can make a decision. Belly button here or belly button here? I think I'm gonna appear here, okay. So let's try this one, so don't want that one. That just means I gotta make some adjustments to the top to make it correct. And then that'd be the upper arm. And I'm just adjusting it as I go. So here's the body now. Two sections, top half, bottom half. This being the black side of the body. This is obviously being the white underbelly. Because it's like a plushy doll, I'm just going to give him those little um, simple legs that are like teardrops. Actually, let's put that one behind like he's running, so he's got movement now. And there we go. And now let's add some hands. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to draw hands, I have it on my channel. I'll, I'll throw a link in the um, in the bottom. So if you want to go and uh, master that down, then just apply that to all your drawings. You can. Like this. That's one hand in place. Really rough. Just keeping it rough for now, just trying to find the right places for all. It's looking like a mannequin hand. 
but I can just add on that in a sec. And I've changed my mind on the legs. <laughs> Let's take legs out for now. Let's do the other hand here. I'm, sort of, I'm going quicker than I would normally if I was drawing just by myself because obviously I don't want this video to be going on for two hours. I think 20 minutes is long enough to sit down and have to learn something. <coughs> and this one here. And let's just, I oh don't know, let's have this guy just holding. Have him holding a spray can actually. Because you, a lot of artists out there, a lot of spray paint artists. He's holding a spray can, he's getting active. Actually, the good thing about these little tutorials to show you guys is the stress isn't there for me. It's um, if I'm doing a project or doing something I'm trying to finalise, there's a lot of stress in achieving something um, absolutely mind blowing. But with these, it's just like going through the foundations and also teaching myself a little bit of like, oh, okay, so this is how I'm getting to my process. <clears throat> Have a little spray can here, just rough it in for now. Um, leg wise, I'm just trying to figure that out still. So I'm gonna put in some shapes until I find it. And then you start finding a little bit extra. Sometimes it takes a while. Just gotta find out, find that shape you wanna you wanna put in place. I kind of in in two minds to make it like a plushy doll. So keep the legs open. And let's just stick with something for that for now. And I'll mold the shape in a little while. And then the panda's tail. Which you probably see a little bit of. You wouldn't see too much of it like that. Okay guys, and that is the basic foundation of all your shapes in place. Um, I kind of really want to add some more hands, so I'll just do it in time lapse, there's no point you just watching me draw some hands in place. Um, but yeah, that's basically the basic group. I'm going to make some adjustments over here in the legs. The legs need to be fixed up a little bit. But once all the foundation shapes are in place and you are happy with to proceed, that's when you want to get a darker pencil or sharpen your pencil up and pick out bits. Like, I'm going to show you something quickly just so you get an understanding, is this no shape here on the nose. So I'm actually just gonna zoom right in so you guys can see. This nose here, so it's a triangle in place. So from the basic, I know darken up is the nostril part here. It's facing the audience. I wanna make this a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna round it off and pull it up a little bit bigger than the initial shape. The foundation's just there as a rough guide for you, so don't try and be too perfect. It's very hard at the beginning because you want every line to be perfect and that's when you get really stiff imagery and you can see it a mile off, it looks too stiff and rigid. But once you loosen up and you start putting the foundations in loose, then put the rigid lines on top, you have a flow element to all your artwork. And this side here, like so, add a few little extra lines around the nose. And let me just show you that if you add a layer of shade into it, the dimension of that goes from flat to 3D instantly. There you go. And then we're just gonna just center the line. And you probably see already how the rest of the image is gonna look or plan out from that nose shape there. Um, obviously the foundation is quite simple. This is really messy. You could probably pull this off quite easily yourself. 
pretty much replicate that 100% or even better. But then it's what you're gonna do with the foundation shapes that really give you more of a stylized imagery and really sets you apart. Anyway guys, I'm gonna literally time lapse this, um, speed it all up for you, and then I'll talk to you at the end once we've finished. once you've put the black lines in you should end up with something like this remember it's your choice as well when you get to this point what lines you want to keep and what other lines you really want to get rid of until you get to a final result you're happy with there's still some rough bits here that I could rub out but um, yeah that's the main gist of it guys and um, that's pretty much the tutorial over I'd like to just say a um, massive thank you to obviously all the Patreons who've been supporting me throughout um, if you join a Patreon, you get goodies every month, like prints, also the stickers, which I showed you at the beginning, as well as um, behind the scene access to private videos where you get to learn more techniques and in-depth uh, tutorials. Um, I hope you're all having a very good, um, very good start of your year. Any suggestions or any new videos you want to see, please leave a comment down below. I read them all, like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, um, peace. <laughs>